Today, okay. the justice is hearing a huge case uh, on the arguments for the effort to remove former President Donald Trump for the 2024 ballot. Our Katie Barlow live outside SCOTUS to break it down for us. Hi, Katie. Hi, good afternoon to both of you. Look, guys, the bottom line from about two hours of oral argument here at the Supreme Court today, President Trump is going to remain on the ballot. It looked like a majority of the justices, if not all of them, were siding with Trump's argument that an individual state, in this case Colorado, cannot have the power to remove him from the state ballot. Now, I think a lot of it is summed up with a question from Justice Elena Kagan, who is an Obama appointee, who asked at one point during argument, why should a state have the power to decide not only for its citizens, but for the nation, too. So it looks like President Trump will remain on the ballot today is a win for him, if not a unanimous win. Kitty, uh, you've got a lot of institutional knowledge about the court. When you have someone like Elena Kagan, who has been on the court since Obama, seemingly siding with uh, the former president, with this being Bo Donald Trump, I think it tells you that they believe in the power of the people, they being all justices, mm -hmm. that it should not be, as you say, or at least has she referenced it, the state, in this case Colorado, who says you're off the ballot for X, Y, Z, in this right. case, because they believe that he participated in the insurrection on January 6th, but rather let the voters decide, right, which would be on election day. Well, Marina, you're exactly right. There was actually some discussion today during oral argument about this overarching principle of democracy, right? That everyone gets to have a vote and everyone gets to have that vote counted. But they were also drilling down on the law here. This is all about whether this provision in the 14th Amendment, which is called the Insurrection Clause, would prohibit Donald Trump from running for or holding the office of the presidency. The Insurrection Clause bars anyone who served in office, like a former president, and swore an oath to the Constitution. But then, uh, in, in this case, uh, perhaps engaged in an insurrection, they would be disqualified from being on the ballot. This law was passed after the Civil War, and it was to prevent Confederate insurrectionists from being able to infiltrate state governments and even the federal government and retain power. So the idea is, you know, this was really to constrain states' power, to limit states' power, and the idea that that would then allow a state to knock someone off the federal ballot uh, without an act of Congress to do so hmm. wasn't really going to fly. Got you. Aren't there other states who were trying to do the same thing? Same. So those are now all negated. You can hang it up. Or will these other states keep trying to ram this through on some other little technicality? So, look, I am reading the tea leaves here. We do not yet have a decision from the Supreme Court. We will get that in the coming days. Both sides have asked for a quick answer here because they're printing election ballots. This is an election year. Um, so as soon as we get that decision, it will almost certainly apply uh, generally to all states during this particular election. They could make it narrow to be just about the facts of this case in Trump, but the rationale would likely apply to all states, including Maine, where the Secretary of State has ruled to keep him off the ballot right. as well. But we're still waiting on yeah. a decision. This is just my best read of where we're going. Well, and certainly the questioning of the justices uh, giving Katie a little bit of opportunity there to mm -hmm. see where this may head. Uh, Katie, one last question here before we go, because I, I would like some clarity on the insurrection clause. Uh, we've heard a lot about uh, people and, and mostly opinion heads talking about former President Donald Trump uh, participating in this insurrection and therefore the clause applies here. Would he not be due, uh, due process? Would that not apply to him? Would he not have to be tried first and found guilty of having committed the insurrection before you can apply the clause to him because it almost sounds like they're already saying he did something without there not having been due process. Once again, Marina, I'm going to say you should have gone to law school because that exact issue came up from Justice Amy Coney Barrett, actually. Some of the due process concerns for the president here. And really the issue is, well, a state like Colorado decided through their own means that he should be disqualified under the insurrection clause. But what if another state has a different definition of what insurrection means or who constitutes an insurrectionist? That was one of the problems that the conservative justices um, asked is what if states disagree? And then it comes down to only a handful handful of states um, actually ultimately deciding the election here. So certainly due process concerns, certainly concerns about states having their own processes that conflict with one another and could certainly lead to chaos if Colorado was permitted to remove him from the ballot. Very, very interesting. Yes. And it goes to see that every word has a different meaning for every person, mm -hmm. including justices, uh, highly intelligent and, people. And, but they have to, you know, interpret it for all of us. And you have to stick to the law. Right, but People interpretation forget that part. Key you, is... Your emotions and stuff have nothing to do with the law.
All right, Katie Barlow for us down at the Supreme Court. We'll see exactly how the justice interpret it. We know they can interpret things different ways and the law. So, again, we'll see how that turns out. In the meantime,